Okay, so we're going to give you an example here of a game that we could make uh, as part of this fairground games activity. Remember, the aim is to have games that A, people really want to play, B, that they can actually win, but C, they're more likely to lose than they are to win because that's what's going to make you, the stall owner, the most money. So this is a really simple example just to get the point across. Exhibit A, bucket. Exhibit B, screwed up piece of paper. Good old fashioned paper toss, okay? So the game would have really simple rules. I put the bucket down, I stand a certain distance away that you're gonna to have to decide, and I try to throw the paper in the bucket. So here we go, example. It's a win, okay? Definitely it's a win. Somebody less skilled might not have been able to do that and it might have just fallen to the side or short, in which case it would be a loss. So a really simple win or lose situation. The adjustments that you're going to have to think about making are how far away is somebody going to have to stand away from the bucket and how are they going to throw the piece of paper. Okay, so for example, if I'm allowed to stand here, that's going to be too easy. I'm going to get it in every time. Whereas if you make me stand, miles and miles away and throw it over my head, chances are I'm probably going to miss all the time as well, so it won't meet that criteria. But you could think about making people stand at this distance, but throwing it around the back, or throwing it under their legs, or whatever it is that you want to do, as long as you've thought about the fact that it has to be slightly uh, biased in your favour. Okay. Another thing you could do to make this game a little bit more interesting is to say, actually, you're going to give people three bits of paper, but to win, you have to get two out of three in. Okay, so that could be one of the ways that uh, you could make it more interesting. All right, so here we go. First piece of paper is in. Okay, but I need two out of three to get it in. Oh, it's missed with the second. And here comes the third. What's going to happen? It's in. So it's a win. Okay, uh, and had I missed with two out of them, two out of the three, then it would have been a loss. Okay, so it's still a very simple win or lose situation. Once you've settled on your game, you've got to get into testing mode. So you're going to have to get uh, some results for your game. So you really need about 50 trials minimum if you can, and preferably using lots of different people, okay, so spin it up around your class, go and test their games while they come and test yours, and start recording some results. So here we go, first test, two out of three to win, there we go, all the first ones are miss, the second one's in, so I need two out of three, oh and I've missed, okay, so I'm going to record that on my results sheet as a loss, okay, on another occasion I might get two out of three in, let's see if I can do that. It's not so difficult from where I'm stood. There we go. One, two, I've got a win. So I'm gonna go back to my record sheet here and put a notch in the win. When I've done that at least 50 times, I'm gonna be able to calculate the expected probability, the relative frequency uh, of my game, right? And if that's not good enough, then I'm gonna to have to make some adjustments to my game and do it again, okay? So that was example one, the good old fashioned paper toss.